What's up, friends? Welcome back to the What well, That's Good podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all, your week is about to get a whole lot better because I have one of the greatest. I don't really need a huge introduction. She's already been on the podcast before, and most of you know her. Taya, welcome back to the Whoa, That's Good podcast. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you for having me. It is so nice to be back with family. Oh, sure. it is family. <laughs> it's so nice for you to be back. I was just reminiscing on the last podcast and thinking about so many of the things that you said and hearing your story. And I was like, oh, man, I'm so excited because I know there's so much more to talk about <laughs> and a new album. So congratulations uh, on your solo album. Thank you. Crazy. It's I, it's been out about four months, which is kind of wild. And wild. you think, you know, like all the build up to it and all the effort and everything. And then you get there and you're like, wow, like, let's just take a moment. But then like, that's when the real work starts. Yeah. It's like a, it's yeah. like a baby of sorts, which so true. I mean, tell me all the wisdom. I need it. <laughs> hey, call me whenever. Well, this is so funny because last time you're on the podcast, I remember telling you that my dad and Christian were big fans of just your music. Well, it's gone to the next level now uh, after LO conference. And my dad walks in the other day wearing the Taya shirt. And I was like, dad, this like I love Taya and I love you. But this is hilarious. It was so That's funny. So he was rocking it. He was rocking it. It's just your face. It, full beauty. Oh, my dad. It was oh, hilarious. My. It was so good. That is so awesome. It's so funny. I know. Oh. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, my, I mean, truly, that we had the best time with you in Louisiana. Right before Tay got on, we were just reminiscing on the LO conference and it was just a special time. It, it's hard. People ask me about it and it's hard to put words to it. Um, but I think to sum it up, God was just so evident. It was like the fruit of who mm-hmm. God was was so evident in a room where there was truly like tangible joy and freedom and love. Yes. And um, there was such a purity. There was no, you could tell it wasn't um, because there were lights and there wasn't because there were moments. It was because the presence of God was in the room. And yeah. man, you led in that moment so beautifully. It was, I wrote down, I stopped during worship when you were leading and just wrote down what I was feeling. Cause I said, I don't want to forget this moment. And I, I wrote down yeah. that I felt like it was a bunch of sisters in a room with their dad and everyone just felt like themselves and free to just talk to their dad. Some people were on their knees. Some people were swaying. Some people were just crying. It was just like this freedom to be who they were in the room with yeah. their dad. And you led that with such a purity and um, it was just beautiful. You're so kind. I mean, I'm so glad we're talking about low conference because um, my husband got to be there, Ben, and also um, part of my team, Abby, who's like my day-to-day manager. And we were so marked by getting to be at low conference. It felt, um, I mean, you said it, the word that we just keep coming back to was it was just so pure. Mm -hmm. And I love that Matthew 5 verse 8, it's like, I think it's my favorite verse in the whole entire Bible Mm -hmm. that says, blessed are the pure in heart. Yeah. for they'll see God. Um, but to be able to see God, you have to be pure in heart. And and I think as well with when it comes like a, a conference in that way, when it feels so pure, it's because there's no guile, there's no ego, mm-hmm. there's no, which I mean, I'm like going to turn it back on you. I'm like, gal, how old are you? Are you 26, 25? 25, yeah. Yeah, so like young and you're newly married and you have a baby girl and again, so young and you feel this like just innate passion for Jesus and for people to discover what you have discovered through Jesus. So we have um, such a unique identity that is found in Jesus Christ and it's individual because God is um, sovereign, but he's also a personal God. And you have had this amazing revelation at a young age. And then you just have this purity and this passion for Mm -hmm. young women to discover truly who they are in Jesus Christ. I mean, it's written behind you live original. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, I will literally cry because I'm like, mm-hmm. you don't even know, like, it's mm-hmm. so special and it's so beautiful what you are actually, mm-hmm. um, creating for, for, for young women to have that space with Jesus and to have, um, moments in his presence to discover that for themselves. And it changes lives and it marks people. And, you aren't taking any of the glory for yourself. You aren't trying to say like, look at me, like it was all pointed to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it felt like 
just the early days. And, and, and I hope that we never lose that, like that yeah. purity and that just like exactly what you said. We just, you know, girls standing in front of our heavenly father and just looking to him and yeah. allowing him space to minister and move. Mm. And, um, and just like, you know, soften out the sharp edges and, yeah. and deal with the things of perhaps just cause we live in a fallen world and we're just trying to learn how to do this. And sometimes we nail it and sometimes mm -hmm. we don't, and just allowing him to speak and, and, um, and you were so prayerful and intentional and you could mm -hmm. tell that when you walked in the building, like you guys had been there weeks before just praying and anoint and like over every seat. But I'm like, it just to the fact, like, again, like we keep talking about how it was so special. There was like, I reckon the number was most of the conference, but like over 300 girls getting baptized and yeah. your mums in, in <laughs> yeah. the baptismal, like yeah. tank, you know, two at a time, like these are like the stuff that you pray for and revival yeah, and for totally. God to have his way. Like, yep. and then your grandma's in the choir. <laughs> she's the youngest, like 70 year old lady yeah. that I've ever seen in my entire life. And she's in the choir serving. Yeah. And then you've got your auntie in the tank, you know, yeah. baptizing women. <laughs> and then you've got your cousin on the platform who just, again, Layla, I can't even deal with. Well, let's I just know. talk about low worship. I everyone. Know. Well, like well. let's, let's get onto that song. Cause that's a special song wow, and thank just you. the place that it came out of, like thank truly you. we've talked about it like every week wow. with our, our team since, because wow. it's so special and so pure and, and you don't even know, which is also wow. something so lovely about that. That's and amazing. So, wow. Yeah. It's, it's hard to put into words it is. exactly thank all the you. things that God did. That's like, that's so overwhelming. And it's so amazing to hear you say, because it really was like so many prayers for years that our family has prayed, that our church has prayed, that wow. our um, friends and like we all got to see it happen together. Um, like we've been praying for even before I moved to Nashville and I lived here in high school, I would just pray for revival to happen here. And when we pray those things, like, what does that mean? You know, and I would just be mm -hmm. like, I want hearts to rev be revived for Jesus here. That um, anything, that any box we put Jesus in from denominational things to whatever, that it would just be broken and that people would just be absolutely revived yes. for Jesus and be in love with him. And that's what it felt like. That's what it looked like, like a community community revived by Jesus, wanting other people to experience that for the first time. I, I remember the first time I had never been to the Bahamas or anything, and I went with Christian's family, and it was so, they kept saying it's so cool to see it from your eyes for the first time because I was like, the water is so pretty. It's so <laughs> stunning. I can't even believe it. Like I was just like so excited. I was like a kid like in awe and wonder, and I feel like I am so – grateful i get to experience that in rooms where people experience that awe and wonder of god for the first time it's like yeah it feels so good i feel so it's so beautiful i'm being washed cl so clean like all these things and like the freedom and the joy and the jumping like the baptism pictures when they're coming out of the water and it's just like <laughs> ah it's like the feeling so like it's like their original self for the first time and it's just like so yes. stunning and it really felt though when you read acts and pages of the Bible, it, it looked like that. Like it, it felt like yeah. that. It looked like that. And I think that's what's cool and encouraging about it is that we didn't do anything um, special or different. Like we just prayed and we just allowed God to move and we just sought after um, the God of the Bible, the same God that's alive today. And we saw that same God. And, and just seeing God be God mm -hmm. is enough to make um, your whole entire life change. And so it was just, it was just incredible. And Ella worship, it was so beautiful. I mean, uh, there was a moment where, you know, you led open and it was crazy. I was standing backstage and I just started crying. I was like, well, first I was so shocked. And I was just like, because I think for the first time it hit me like, whoa, we've been praying over these things. We've been um, believing mm. for these things. And all of a sudden we're here in this moment. We we have this conference in our hometown. That's really a small town. Not not a lot of conferences Beautiful happen little there. Beautiful Monroe. Yeah, not a lot of things <laughs> happen there. So, you know, and Ella Worship's finally coming to life. These songs have been written. There's people here experiencing the Lord. And then you're up there who I've been a friend of, but also looked up to for a long time and you're leading and I just am sitting there like in such shock and I start crying and I, and I just say, I'm so overwhelmed. And Emily Volkatan standing beside me, she goes, are you just feeling overwhelmed? And I said, yeah. And she said, why? Because <laughs> Taya is leading an Ella Worship song at an Ella Worship conference in your oh. hometown. And I said, 
Yeah, that. That's why. <laughs> that is that is exactly why. And it just was this moment of your ways are higher than our ways, God. You know, your thoughts are higher. Well, whatever we thought when we prayed it, you had a lot more in mind. And and sometimes that looks like tomorrow's answer prayer, but most of the time it looks at years. And and this was a years thing. And so it was just cool to step in. I want to ask you about just you leading because truly watching you lead. I've obviously seen you lead a couple of times and I've seen you lead with Hillsong a lot, but seeing you lead as Taya and the freedom that you led with and then seeing you lead open when you weren't planning on singing that song. And I don't even know (laughs) if you knew the song, but you somehow did. Like, how do you as a worship leader step into the amount of freedom that you worship with now and the purity? Like, have you always been that authentic in your worship or do you feel like it's something that over the past few years you've really stepped into? Well, that's good, fam. I'm so excited to tell you about one of my family's favorite universities, the Liberty Flames. Liberty University, let's fan the flames, baby. Liberty University has a mission of training champions for Christ, and that mission drives everything that they do from events to having a Bible-based education. Some of you may have heard me talk about it before, but I've got to share. I want to share it again with you because it is one of the best experiences I have while learning, including my siblings have had while learning. Um, A while ago, I got to grow my knowledge of business and took a couple online Liberty classes. That was so fun. I love to do that. However, is not all they have to choose from. Liberty has more than 450 online degrees from the associate level to the doctoral level. So that's pretty awesome. I think you can find what you're looking for there. And most classes are 100% online. I had several siblings attend Liberty, including my sister and both of my brothers. My sister is actually still taking online classes from Liberty and she loves it. I mean, how could you not? It's a great school to go to. The professors are so helpful. It's so easy to make classes work with your schedule as well. They have eight-week subterms with no set login times. So maybe you are someone who has put a pause on education and you're ready to jump back in. Well, I have good news. Liberty is transfer-friendly and gives credit for qualified life experience, on-the-job or military training, and a variety of certifications. Or maybe you're like me and you just want to continue learning. You want to go learn in a specific subject or something. They have incredible classes to choose from. Don't just take my word for it, though. Liberty was actually ranked top five best online colleges in America by Niche.com in 2022. Not only is the online campus awesome, but so is their in-person campus. Liberty has a 7,000 plus acre campus that is absolutely stunning. We've been there. It's beautiful. More than 120 student-led clubs and 20 NCAA D one program. So to start your future now, go to liberty.edu slash Sadie. And because you're a well, that's good listener, you're actually going to get your application fee waived. hey if you decide to go to Liberty, it's a place for you. We're going to help you out with that. So friend, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started on your future today. Well, I mean, firstly, very kind. Um, and I will say that is a just back on open on that song. It's a very anointed song. It's a very special song. I also feel like Layla who leads it is very anointed and very special and similar to yourself, like doesn't know how special and how anointed, which there's again, something pure about that and beautiful. And, um, but it's, I mean, my husband is a man of very few words, but when he says something, I really take notice and he's very sensitive to the Holy Spirit because he just lives, um, he just has his own personal relationship with Jesus and he cultivates that and he puts the time aside and truly trying to understand what the Bible is saying and reads about the context and commentaries, like all the things. And I learned so much from him mm-hmm. <laughs> about how I should That's be reading awesome. my Bible. I'm like, yes, love that. Um, awesome. And and he just leaned over. It was the first night that we got to be in there and just like the low worship team was like leading and introducing some of these songs and he just leaned over particularly in that song and was just like who is that person and also this is a very special anointed song wow and yeah and it and it again there's something about the simplicity and the sweetness of it anyway so i'm just encouraging everyone to go listen to it because it's their favorite song it's it's very loud loudly playing in our house quite often amazing i love that so much (laughs) and it's just precious and pure and and again just a good challenge as well like in every season i leave my heart open you know, open to you. Yeah. You know, like I'm holding back nothing, which is like 
great things to sing harder to truly Way mean harder. as well. So, so yeah. sometimes you need to listen to these things like 10 times over and then you're like, Oh, okay. I still oh, listen to open that. like every day. Yeah. Cause it, it is, it's, it's almost beautiful. a daily, um, it's like a daily prayer and a daily surrender of like, because to say I'm holding back nothing is like you said, it's easy to say that, but then to think about in your life, am I actually holding back nothing to you? Yeah. And I think a lot of times I can be like, God, I'm all in. And then when I really think about it, I'm like, yeah, but I actually haven't, you know, surrendered this or haven't laid this down or it was contingent on this. And so I agree. Yes. We, we blast it every day. And you know what's so cool, Taya, is just and I want to get back to, to what we were talking about, but the purity of that song and the anointing. So this is crazy. So my daughter, honey, is like, she is very opinionated already about what songs we listen to in the car. And of course, kids are going to want to listen to like Baby Shark, okay? Or they're going to want to listen to the kids' songs. But I'm not kidding you. She will cry until I put on open. Like, it is so, it's like beautiful. Every time I put on open, she stops crying. And then I will try to change it to another worship song and she cries <laughs> and I got to go back to open. And it's like, I was like, what is that? You know, cause it's not, doesn't have any kind of kid tune to it. It's mm-hmm. definitely not baby shark. And it's like, but I think it's the Holy spirit on that song and it just, it soothes her. It makes her feel peace. And, um, I just thought that was super cool. So to, to just love that. draw even more of what we're saying, even my one year old daughter it makes her stop crying. I'm not kidding. Every single time I play that song, it's become my go-to for if honey's crying, put on open. Like, Christian, get open on. Like, it, it's it's actually really cool. I, I love that because I also, I mean, I don't, babies were just with our Heavenly Father. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he knit them together in the mother's womb. And I have this little theory that I'm like, babies actually are more sensitive, I think, to the presence of God and to the Holy Spirit and anointing because they've just been with yeah, our Heavenly that's Father. So cool. Like that's in, so cool. in an intimate way, perhaps more than we have. Yeah. And so I'm like, there is something about a you know, like yeah. a baby just being sensitive to someone who carries the presence of God yeah. or like is that person that's, that's innately cool. just um doing a lovely example of, you know, God's character. So that's that's, cool. that's what I reckon. But I need to obviously make sure it's backed up in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I mean, Jesus says so much about kids and childlike faith. And maybe exactly. maybe you have childlike faith because your faith is not tainted yet because you were yep. you were just with the Father and your faith. Okay, well, we can get back to what you were saying because I was asking, like, in your worship, do you feel like over the years you've gotten more? Because um, for Layla, for instance, for Layla and Kaylee, Kaylee actually wrote open and— um, I thought it was really awesome that she wrote the song, but really felt like Layla was the one to sing it. And yeah. I just thought that was a really cool thing. And then Reeves is doing it and my brother Will, and they've never led worship like this before. And so we've been talking a lot of like, how do you lead and not perform? Obviously, how do you yeah. step into this like very pure way of leadership? And when you were up there, I was like, it was so good. Cause I was t- trying to tell them like, Watch what she's doing. Like, watch just the oh, wow. uh, the way that you're going after the Lord's heart. And it was like you did not care. You, I didn't hear you miss a note because I think you're amazing. But, but you didn't care if you did. You just went for it. You know, yes. like it. Yes. You were just some songs. You just screamed the whole time because it was. <laughs> but it, but it needed to be. It was like that's what made people get on their feet. Some songs you just set and it was so slow but it was like it's what brought the room and you were just so in tune with the holy spirit like how do you get to the place if you want to be a leader a worship leader or um anything on a stage how do you get to the place where you're leading and not like performing yeah um you're very kind um definitely missed all the notes 100 (laughs) percent. but there's something like you know i think you have to come to a point as a worship leader, and I'm sure you would say the same, like where um, you have to let it is the performance side go where it's like, it's okay if I stuff up, it's okay if I sing a wrong note or cause we're human, we're not yeah. perfect. And also a flawless, um, it says in the Psalms, a flawless performance means nothing to you. Wow. Like I learned God worship when my pride was shattered. Wow. Heart shattered lives don't for a moment escape God's notice. Hmm. And there's something sweet about that because it's, I could sing all the perfect notes, but if 
it's not anointed, then it's just the sound of like a clanging gong. And it's, it doesn't have the power to transform someone's life because it's void of God. And so I do think like, um, you know, I'm a worship leader and I'm a singer because that's my weapon. That's my instrument. And so there is that stewardship side. Um, you know, I warm up every single time I'm trying to get better at warming down. Um, if something's going a little bit funny with my voice, like booking a lesson with my singing coach, like I do think there's that area. And I, it's a little personal, um, annoyance when I have, I hear worship leaders go, Oh, like I'm a worship leader, but I'm not a singer. Cause I'm like, well, actually, what are you using? Yeah. The vocal cord. This is a gift yeah. from God and you need to steward it. And That's cool. every voice is different. The other thing is, is if I try to lead worship like anybody else, it is going to be the second best version. Mm, that's good. And it's, yeah, like it's not going to be, you know, um, I grew up with my dad. He never said that um, with my mom and my dad, but my dad would always say like, did you do your best? I'm not expecting you to be first, but did you do your utmost, like your best? That's good. And, and I would always say, you know, yes or no. And usually it would be like, yes, I tried my hardest and I did my best. And he said, well, that's all I can ask of you. And so I kind of put it in the context of this, of am I doing my best, Tay is best. And obviously it's going to look different because we all have different um, voices. No, vo you know, vocal cords are the same. We have, you know, different fingerprints, like we're originals. Um, I think my advice, uh, like the best advice I've ever received from the last podcast was you're an unrepeatable miracle. That was a little placard that my mom had stuck to the back of my sister and cause we shared a room together um, on the back of the door. It was written in purple. So I just was like, this is mine, you know, because that it. was my I favorite color. Um, but I had that revelation from a young age of like, I can't be anybody else. And if I try, it's just going to be the second best version. So I may as well be Taya and be Taya to the best of my ability so in good. all the ways honoring God, like, you know, like it says in the Bible, whatever you find, you know, for your hand to do, like do it as if it's unto the Lord, no matter yeah. what it is. And, um, and also cause God's worthy of that as well. Yeah. Like all we can bring is our lives. And in essence, like it's not enough cause he's done everything and he would never yeah. have to do anything else except for send his son. And it was all enough. Yeah. And just like, you know, Romans 12 says, like in view of God's mercy, like my response in view of everything that you've done is my life, mm -hmm. like wholly pleasing to you, my walking around, eating life, um, everything like as a sacrifice to you, this is my holy, you know, worship to who you are, God. That's good. And so to permeate, hopefully that permeates into like every area, including worship leading. And there's something really freeing as well. Like I hope people are like, oh, but I like you, like God wants your voice. He yeah. wants to hear your um that's so good. Expression of who he is. And, and I can't reach everybody. Yeah. Like you have an innate story and a revelation about who Jesus is. And hopefully it's all growing. Cause that's, you know, our personal ownership as Christians. Like we yeah. all have to be growing in this, um, every single day and we need Jesus every single day. And mm -hmm. hopefully we're not, um, making those moments where we get on a platform, the mountain, like it is the mountaintop, but we're not as, humans, we're not built for the mountaintop. We're actually built for the valley. We're built for the everyday, Stay. like it's in the mundane everyday stuff that we are actually to um, honor God in. And yeah. sometimes it's in the mundane that it's harder. Like yeah. I'm going to glorify you God here when yeah. I'm sorting the laundry or yeah. when I'm, you know, here again, really struggling to like focus on my Bible when I know that I should be having my devotional time, but I'm still here, right. Lord. And I want to hear from you. And maybe I've been peppering you with like requests, but I have forgot the Thanksgiving that I was meant to come with into your presence before wow. I ask things of you. Um, and yeah, so I, I think it's been a journey. I think I've just been comfortable with just being myself. Cause it's like this revelation of, you know, I was a tall girl during all of like primary school and high school. I was the 97th percentile, like when I was a child. So wow. there yeah, just like being the tall, kind of gawky looking <laughs> girl. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Coming into her own. But it's like, I can't be anything else. And there's something yeah. so nice when we get to that revelation because it's so freeing. And it also, I feel like, takes the pressure off. Right. Because, like, again, God's not after perfection. He yeah. just wants our heart and He wants all of it. Yeah. And if I can do that when leading, it also just makes other people. Yeah. realize, oh, I can be myself. Yeah. And 
and I don't have to pretend because the other thing is like, I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but like God can't bless who we're trying to be. Yeah. Cause it's all a facade and it's a filter and it's not real. But when we bring our honest selves, like when we're like in the message, I think it talks about when learning how to pray, it's like you go into a quiet space and you shut the door, like no one else is there. And then you try to be there as honestly and as honestly yourself as you can, like with no, like Mm -hmm. pretending that we're something that we're not, or like coming in with all these things, like just be. And the crazy thing is, is God sees everything. Mm -hmm. He really knows who we truly are. Like, you know, everything, even the thoughts of our minds. And yet sometimes we act like we can't actually come to him because if you really knew, I'm like, he was there the whole time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, and you think you're hiding now, it. You know? Yeah. You run because you think you're, you're hiding it, but he was literally there the entire yeah, and he, time. And he loves you and he has a better way. Yeah. That's so good, Taya. That's so good. And I think truly really one of the greatest gifts you can receive for yourself is the gift of knowing this is how God made me and he made it for a reason. And I'm going to accept mm-hmm. that and I'm going to embrace that um, because you're right. If you can stop the comparison game of, I'm trying to be her. Um, I, I need yeah. to be good enough for them. And you can just be the ultimate version of you. It's such a gift because you don't have to strive. You don't have to compete. You don't have to uh, measure up to anything other than who the standard of who God made you to be. And, yeah. you know, I remember it was kind of hard for me to feel that complete honest version of myself for a little while because I felt like um, I always had a camera on me. You know, I always had, you know, people watching and I was like, God, like, you know, I feel like because I'm so trained to um, be on camera and so trained to be on stage, like I feel like sometimes in my prayer life, I'm coming to you already formulating what I'm saying in such a way that is, um, saying it prettier than it really is. And so I actually started journaling a couple of, maybe a year or two ago. And I always had so many people say, you should journal, you should journal. And I'm always like, yeah, but I'm just not that person. <laughs> it's like I'd start a journal and then like it'd be six months later and I'd be like, hey again, I'm back. Here's another exciting thing or bad thing that happened in my life. And so I was just like, this is not for me. But after I kind of had this realization that I'm just, I want to just be so honest with the Lord, I um, started a journal and reading back my first journal makes me laugh. But now I've gotten in the routine and I love it so much. And the first like page of my journal, I'll just share it with you all because I think it's funny now. But I was like, God, this journal is going to be a prayer. I was like, but it's not going to sound like a prayer. I was like, I'm not going to say dear God every time, but I'm talking to you. And I was like, and I'm going to be very honest. And this is going to be like the most stripped back version of me ever. And just tell you exactly how I feel. And it's so cool though, because as I read back, I I was super honest and I was, um, and and some journals didn't end with like the good story, you know, because I think that's like, for me, if I'm telling somebody something that's hard, of course, I'm always going to end it with like, but it's really not that bad. And God's doing this and God's doing this and like make it sound better than it is. But sometimes like just the raw honesty and like letting, Mm -hmm. like letting yourself sit with where you're really at and the reality of where you really are makes when you see Jesus come into picture that much better. I think about like with Peter, whenever um, Jesus said to Peter, you know, cast your net on the other side. And Jesus is like, we're not catching. I mean, Peter's like, we're not catching anything, Jesus. And there's something about mm-hmm. just like that honesty and that frustration of like, we're just not, you know. But then he says, but at your word, I will try again. And he throws it over. And what happens? All the fish come. And it was just this amazing moment of like, here's my reality. But now when I see you do the supernatural in my reality, everything changes. And now I'm an all winner. And now I can honestly worship. And I feel like I'm learning that in my life. Like it's okay to be super honest with the Lord and say, Hey, I'm not catching anything. This night was not good. This was bad, but I'm going to continue to take your word and then like, just be amazed, you know, about what only you can do and still like honor you in the middle of it. Sit with you on the boat while I'm waiting for the fish to come. So I, don't know, I, I think it's cool. Um, so many things. I, I, I want to talk to you about um, your album, obviously. And one thing about your album, <laughs> I'm like, we could talk forever. I'm like, I'm like uh. <laughs> but your album, no, I'm like so excited to talk about this because honestly, like there's so many songs. Um, I wrote down two of my favorites, Not Ashamed, three of my favorites, Get Away, Canical. I love them all. But like those three Aww. have just been like so good for me. And, and they're probably, you could ask 
you know, 100 people and they'd all say different ones because they're all so good. Um, but one of the things I thought was cool about this album is you said that the Lord kind of told you that this album needed to be like Honey, which I was like, I love that because yes. obviously we named our daughter Honey. And so tell me about just this album coming to be and what are some of the songs in the album that feel super personal to you? Yeah. Um, well, I it, it's so funny. Um, you're so right when you say if you surveyed 100 people, like so many people will resonate with different songs. And um, that's a sweet joy that I get to know with now writing my own songs and just hearing people's like, oh, I love this song for this reason. And this really ministered to me, which is such like, I don't think that will ever get old. And I'm so that's humbled cool. that you know, people would, um, be able to meet with Jesus in it. Like that's, you know, my prayer for the whole thing. And so I'm so humbled that that happens. I'm like, thank you, so Jesus. Cool. Oh, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, still don't, if I'm being truly honest, but it, yeah, it was a God thing. I hadn't written for like seven years, which is so funny. Like, you know, the number of seven, the year yeah. of comp- like, yeah. the number of completion full circle, which cool. again, God's in all the details. And I love just seeing him in all the details as well. Um, and he relates to us again. He's a personal God, how he created us. And I'm in into the little details and looking for all the little things. And I feel like he just like drops little fun things. Where I'm like, Oh, thanks. So cool. <laughs> thanks dad. I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hadn't written for seven years, but I love that you said that you started journaling because I journal mm. and it's something that I, it was back when I was in Sydney, I would have been closer to, um, I don't think I was on staff at church yet, but I had started journaling because my friend had handed me this book called Ordering Your Private World. Hmm. Um, and I think it's by Gordon McDonald. Um, hmm. And basically he talked about journaling so honestly that you almost need to lock it up into a safe <laughs> and it's not like a journal of like this is what I did this day but it's like a prayer journal and mm-hmm. I loved that because I used to always get distracted sometimes when I was praying because I would just have all these thoughts in my head and with a journal on you know on the right side like have like a little notepad there and you can just jot down whatever drop, drops into your head so you don't forget it but you're not giving it attention in that moment like mm-hmm. you're just writing down like groceries like you know whatever <laughs> comes to your head so then you can then continue to focus but I loved it because um, it's like if we can't be honest before God, then where can we truly be honest? Like he's the person that made us. He's the person mm-hmm. that loves us. He's the person that says that we are the apple of his eye. We are the – like he wants communion with us so much and he will love us no matter what. Like he is so gracious and so kind and he's the redeemer and – He's the one that sees it all and, again, still loves us. And Mm -hmm. it's just that revelation of being able to be, I'm safe with you. Mm -hmm. And and so during those seven years of not writing, like even though I was stagnant in the songwriting, I had seven years worth of, you know, I call it JC time, devotional time with the Mm -hmm. Lord. And I I love my journal. Like I have my journal here. No way will I show the other (laughs) side of it. (laughs) But I, every single it's time awesome. I'm like, like, I'll just flip to something. I probably won't really, cause it's so like, oh gosh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, good afternoon, Lord. It is me, your gal who is sick, recovering from the flu. <laughs> Thank you I for getting it. better and for a kind husband supporting me and not making me feel bad. Oh Aww, my gosh, that's so for recovering. Sweet. That's so but sweet. it's like, I love that. I, I, I started the, like, like that every single time with the date, just so that I'm like, yeah. Because, again, it's that thing of, like, we're to come into the presence of yeah. God, like it says in Psalm 100 with the password, thank you. Um, when we present our request before God, it's firstly with thanksgiving, which we often, again, just come in with, like, you know, yeah, God, can I – but it's like, no, it's with thanksgiving, like, Lord, you are everything that I need. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for a day. I have yeah. breath in my lungs today. I'm alive. I get another day. I get another shot at this. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And there's something that shifts on the inside when we start with that as well yeah. because – 
there's a reason we do a praise song at the top of a service because it shifts the atmosphere. It's cool. And it says in the Bible that God inhabits the praises of his people. Anyway, there's like a million different things. I love it. But, um, I love how that scripture <laughs> just like flows out of you. Every time I talk to you, I want to go read after, which is like the best compliment. I, love that. I feel like that after, you know, someone has a conversation with you, they want to go read more of the word because that's how much of the word that you said. It's like, I want to get more of this and more of this conversation when I'm not with Taya is reading the Bible, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> oh, I love that. You're very kind. You're very kind. Um, I need more of it. My gosh, more of him, <laughs> less of me. Let's be honest. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? Um, yeah. So it was like seven years of not, but still having those honest, you know, conversations with God. And I think it gave me time to marinate in the word of God. And, and so when it came time to write, and it was like this, I knew that there was something coming, but I had some sweet friends who like prophesied over me and said, Hey, and they had no idea that there was talk of an album and Taylor album. And they're just like, just so you know, it's going to have to like, you're not going to have to force this. God's going to bring the right people around you and it will happen in his timing. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to have to, like, it's not going to be like, you have to pull this thing out. Like it, like, cause I had no desire or idea that this is what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I have like this childlike thing where I'm like, God, you can tell me to do anything and I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to feel qualified, which that is my own struggle that I need to wrestle out before God, to mm-hmm. be honest, which is actually pride. Mm. Wow. <laughs> like you think, oh, what a humble person. Like, you know, actually that's called fake humility because wow. you don't think God can do it. Wow. So that's my own thing that I've had to like go through. Taya, over- that is that's good. That that's like a ooh. That's a ooh. That's good. That's just like a. I mean, everybody needs to hear that moment. I mean, it's it's painful and it's um, challenging, you know. And and even after like the albums come out, like there's conversation of like starting the process of writing for a second one, and I'm like, it has been four months. Like yeah. we have just birthed this thing. I'm like, are we kidding? And I realize it's just this, like, it has to be you, God. You have to, you know, give me a word for this and you have to direct and guide me, which again, like he has never failed me once. Mm -hmm. He has always been there. He has always been sufficient. Um, But it is that constant, just personal, personally, like that wrestle of do I actually get all my sufficiency from you, God? Are you truly the one who will make a way for me? Um, and if I am holding back, it's because I actually don't believe that you are Mm. and that you will do what you've said that you will Mm. do. And, um, it's so challenging because then it means I'm doubting God's ability. Wow. Wow. When we read all the time in the Bible that he's the all powerful one and he's the sovereign one and he never leaves us or forsakes us. And yet Tay in a little humanness is like, I'm so overwhelmed. I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm so challenged by say in this season as well, like um, when you're learning to bring something in, into the world and t- to steward something, your confession is really important, mm-hmm. which it, this is going to sound so silly because this whole process of bringing an album was actually me learning how to find my voice. The thing that I'm known for wow. that people are like, no, no, the ocean school. Great. But I'm like, no, I didn't know how to find just my voice. And it's looked like so many more different things than I thought. Like I thought it was just this album and this record and my songwriting voice, but it's like raising my voice in community in a good way of like loving people well and speaking the truth in love and also staying and continuing to cultivate friendship and true friendship where we tell each other the truth and we love each other, even though it's hard and, there's a million different things. Um, good. Yeah. When it comes to that, but all I can say is that God is gracious. Mm. And again, his um, timing is perfect. Yeah. And all the things that I was writing about, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, I started this project on zoom. Cause we had this great plan of like, we're going <laughs> to like do an album or write in Nashville, go to London, like just <laughs> crazy plans. And then the world shut down. Wow. So I was like, <laughs> great. Um, Scratch that. <laughs> Let me just yeah, start like, over have you thought about Zoom? One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the plan and we're not doing it. Yeah. Great. Um, but the crazy thing is, is the last gathering that we had um, as a church before the world shut down was our women's conference. 
and I I need I needed a word from God because I was like, you know, I'm a worker bee. I'm not a CEO type. Like I will come alongside, work so hard, but I just don't know God how to set the vision and the direction. Yeah. Like this is uh, something that feels like it goes against my nature, but I also need to again humble myself yeah. and not be prideful and go, no, well, if you've called me to this, you'll anoint me for this and yeah. you will give me the tools and the right people. Yeah. And I, I could say on the other side, he's so faithful and he's mm. so kind and he has the better way. And what ended up being like, what could have been like, oh gosh, what are we doing? Like we're writing on Zoom. The crazy thing is I hadn't successfully co-written properly, I don't think, where I felt comfortable enough to bring my voice in a session until we started writing on Zoom wow. because I was in my own home. It was like a one-bedroom rental like apartment. Thank goodness my husband was still like part of essential services like in the building industry so he could go to work because <laughs> that would have been hilarious, him in the bedroom trying to like, you know, do all these like Zoom calls funny. and work. And I'm just like, shush sure, for a second, like, <laughs> ah, like just singing it out. That's hilarious. But like – on my, on my piano that he gave me, you know, for in our first year of marriage for my 30th birthday, he just said, um, I think it was that second year. Sorry. I got married when I was 28. Yep. Great. Second year. Really good <laughs> I do that all the time. Um, I'm like, you know, I should like, not be forgetting already. <laughs> People were married for like 40 years and they were like, how do I do this? Yeah. No, I'm like, and people just know it straight away. I'm like, I need to get better at that. Yeah. Um, but it was a, a piano that he had, purchased because I hadn't had a piano since I moved to Sydney and that was like 2010. So it was like a long time yeah. and similar, like seven, eight years ish. And he just said, this comes with no strings attached. I know that this is going to, um, deepen your relationship with God and there's going to be sweet, like, you know, um, places that you're going to meet with him wow. through this piano. And he says, I know there are songs, but this, this, there's no strings attached. You don't have to write songs. You don't, you know, cause he knew what I had. Yeah kind of felt that I had written, but I didn't really write again. And so it was just so, so sweet that of course God would orchestrate it like a silver lining of what was a really difficult season for cool. um, most people was a gift in the sense that I got to find my voice in my own home wow. on my own piano. Yeah. And um, had I been in person, it would have been a beautiful album written for me. Mm -hmm. And I probably wouldn't have found my voice in the way that I did. And then even the way God knit together um, just a few key songwriters, like I got to write with this guy called John Guerra, who mm. I encourage you to get his album, Keeper of Days. He is a gift. He's like John the Baptist. He's mm. the kindest human. And not That's only cool. did I get to become friends with John, and he's an artist in his own right. I didn't know that he was a producer, mm. but I got to meet his wife, Val, and their little daughter, Winslow. And Aww. it just they just became instant friends and family. Awesome. and you know, that they got to like, so we eventually, when we got to leave the country, um, which is another God story of getting out of the country to go sing with a very famous opera singer in Italy. Wow. And then it's like, well, now that we're out of the country, cause they got permission from the government for us to leave, let's go to Nashville. Imagine if we could write in person. And wow. I'm like, Oh, I've never done that. Like, let's see how that goes. And we finished six eights of the album within three weeks of writing. Wow. Um, John and his wife and his daughter came to the Nashville Airbnb and we all like stayed together like a family. We rode around the kitchen table, like so get cool. away. You can hear the hum of the refrigerator because we just oh, used so the demo cool. vocal. Like it just felt um, wholesome and sweet, which is funny because it was everything that that word that I felt God give me, you know, at that women's conference. Yeah. Um, I just felt like God said it was to be like honey and, that it was to be sweet, palatable, easy to digest. Cool. And as it goes down by the grace of God, it would heal things on the inside. Cool. Maybe even like wounds that were still a bit sore and perhaps people didn't realize yeah. needed tending to. Wow. Um, Cause honey does have that healing quality. Absolutely. And the crazy thing was, is that there's still a little bit of like Thomas on the inside. And so after God spoke that word and it wasn't audible, it was just an impression. I wrote it down. I was in bed that night and my husband wasn't at the women's conference and he went out and was helping friends move. And, um, and I hadn't told him about the word and I was just looking at it going, was I hungry? Like, is this really <laughs> the word? Like, you know, cause I love sugar. And I'm like, I love honey, you know? Yep. And I'm just like, that's so weird. Like maybe to be like redeemer yeah. or like comforter, <laughs> you know, like faith, like, you know, and I'm just looking at this word and then again, this kind of just says the person that I'm married to that he just lives in this space where he, you know, I mean, he doesn't have social media, doesn't have 
has never had it, doesn't have Facebook, like nothing. And so I just feel like he is steadfast in a way because he just doesn't have all these like social pressures that we seem to put on ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. And so his communion with the Lord just seems to be so streamlined in a really lovely way Mm -hmm. because he also chooses to, um, yeah, fully place Jesus as number one in all the areas first and the place where he goes to first. And because of that, he just lives in this like, you know, he's not thinking, oh, like, for example, he walked, he said, I have a present for you. I walked past it and just thought of you. So I got it. Hmm. And I thought it was like, it, it was in wine country. I thought he was going to like a beautiful, I don't know, bottle of wine because we're trying to be mature, you know, <laughs> you get married and you're like, let's have cheese and crackers and wine. Like, cause we're old, you know, this is what <laughs> we do. Awesome. So I was just like thinking, oh, that's what, that's what it's going to be. And he handed me this brown paper bag and out of the bag, I pulled the jar of honey. So cool. That's like on so the same cool. day. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. okay, God, confirmation. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is so cool. I love that. Uh, gosh, I we kind of had even a similar thing with Honey when we were deciding on Honey's yes. name and we were like, I loved it so much. And um, it was crazy because I had kind of forgotten about this, but when Christian and I went on our first date, we did pottery and, um, I, I, um, we, I, you know, I did a little mug and I painted it blue and all I wrote on it was honey. I just wrote the word honey and it had to do oh, with wow. the conversation we had had, um, previously, this is our first date and I wrote honey on this mug. So anyways, <gasps> never like couldn't find the mug when we were talking about, you know, we've knew we were pregnant. We we're talking about maybe naming a girl. If we have a girl, honey. So anyways, it was like three days before the gender reveal party and we're at my parents' house and we're just kind of talking about it. And my dad walks in just so casually. He's just drinking coffee and I look (laughs) over and he's holding the honey mug that I did on our first date. And I was like, (gasps) oh my gosh. I was like, I think we're going to have a girl. We're going to name her honey. Like it was just so cool. And so three days later, of course, the pink paint goes everywhere and I'm like, (laughs) it's our honey. So that's just so cool. I love how God does that, just brings confirmation. And um, actually, earlier today, of course, when the podcasts go out, it'll be different timings. But I got to interview Cody Carnes today as well. And it was yes. so good. And he was just talking about how there's something so amazing in marriage when the Holy Spirit uses your spouse to confirm what you're hearing. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, for people listening out there, just being in tune with the Spirit, like asking God to speak and asking God to lead you. Maybe it's with your spouse. Maybe it's with your family or your your friends, but it's just amazing. You can pass by a honey jar and you think, well, for some reason I feel led to buy this, but like that's the very thing they needed that day to confirm what God's doing in their life. And I just love how God uses his people to, um, you know, do the, be a part of the moves he's making, you know? And so I just think that that is so beautiful. Taya, honestly, I mean, we could talk all day. This is so good. Um, Your album is so good. It's so rich. It's so full of honey. It is sweet and healing to the bones and to the soul. And my gosh, um, like I said, there are so many of these songs that I've been listening to. We, We have worship on Wednesdays at our office and the other day, Love Kaylee that. was leading and she was singing uh, Canticle and it was just so good. And all of our team was mm-hmm. just declaring that over our office. And uh, it was so awesome. And um, so many lines that I keep, the more you listen to your album, because it is such a story that I feel like you tell and so many different ones and so many different songs, I'll pick up on just a different line or a different word. And I'm like, man, I'm going to hold on to that. And so it's just so rich. And so I, I just encourage everyone who's listening, if you have not heard Taya's album, go blast it, go listen, go blast it. <laughs> um, Taya, you're such a good friend. You're such a good leader. And thank you for just, um, oozing the goodness of God. We're so thankful to know you and to be in your corner. Hey, and you're very kind and vice versa. Like, it's so lovely to get to be here and chat and just have genuine communion. And I just love that whenever we talk about Jesus, mm-hmm. I like, I I know he comes close. We mention his name yeah, and it's the name that's above every other name, but I reckon he just comes in close and he's like, hmm, what are you guys saying about me? Like <laughs> I hear so my good. name and we're two or three gathered, he's there and yeah. it's just such a joy. So cool. thank you for having me. It's that's so awesome.